Technically, we are all on a diet because diet refers to the total amount of food that we regularly consume. And depending on what kind of diet we consume, that is going to determine what kind of nutrients and non-nutrients we take into our body and the effects that these nutrients have on our body as well. Nutrients are substances found in food that our body needs to survive, for maintenance, for growth, to be able to do all the various things it needs to do. And some of these nutrients are essential, meaning that you absolutely need to consume them from the diet because the body is unable to make them itself. So examples here are like essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, water. These are all essential. Some other nutrients we might consider non-essential. It doesn't mean that our body can't use them or they're not important. It's just that they're less important as far as consuming them from the diet goes. Well, there are six different categories of nutrients that we can take into the body. And we can divide these nutrients into the macronutrients, ones needed in higher amounts, and the micronutrients, ones needed in smaller amounts every day. That doesn't mean micronutrients aren't important, it just means we need smaller amounts of them in order to, to, do their, to do their job. When I look at the macronutrients, I can divide them up a little bit further into the energy yielding nutrients. And as the name implies, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins are three energy yielding nutrients. These are the ones that contribute to fueling our body. And they're the only nutrients of the six categories. They're the only nutrients that are able to uh, provide um, energy. And we measure energy in calories in Canada, in kilocalories in Canada. These three nutrients, carbohydrates, lipids, and fats, you'll sometimes notice that there's several different types of nutrients within these categories. Um, and all carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, these are considered organic. I know the term organic gets thrown around a lot these days, but it's from a chemistry perspective and a nutrition perspective. Something is organic if it contains carbon. Okay, so all of these are organic, whereas water, is not water's h2o so it is not organic i purposely put the various molecular structures of some of these nutrients in this slide because i think it's important to realize that what makes each category of nutrients different is really the the structures that are found within that category so even if you look at carbohydrates and two types of carbohydrates we have our sugars here and we have our starch here they they both have a very basic similar structure. St starch is just a big long chain of chain of sugars, and the original structure, something called a saccharide or a monosaccharide, is the same for each. So that's what makes us group nutrients into these different categories. Okay, so those are macronutrients needed in larger amounts. There are also micronutrients. Like we said, they're still important, um, but we just need less of them every day. The big difference between vitamins and minerals is that vitamins are organic. Okay, so if you look at a structure here, here we have vitamin D. Actually, you might not know this, but every time you see a little point on this, oopsie, on this structure here, that shows where there is a carbon. And so vitamins are carbon-based structures, which makes them organic. Minerals are inorganic. They don't have carbon in their structure. Um, they are nonetheless very important. Now, what do vitamins and minerals do? Really depends on the vitamin and the mineral. They have lots of different roles. However, both of these um, uh, vitamins and minerals both tend to have a role in promoting something called enzymatic activity. Okay, so vitamins can work as coenzymes, minerals can work as cofactors, both speeding up the rates of reactions. Okay, by helping to activate enzymes. Minerals, um, it, unlike vitamins, minerals, one of the things they can do is they can provide body structure. So think of like calcium hardening your teeth and your bones or phosphorus doing the same thing. Whereas minerals are the only nutrient that does not provide structure to the body. In addition to these nutrients, things our body needs for growth and maintenance and survival, there's some like extras found in food that we sometimes call non-nutrients. Non-nutrients can have a positive effect, can have a negative effect, or sometimes a bit of a neutral effect. We'll talk about caffeine in the water chapter when we talk about diuretics, but I just want to talk a little bit about phytochemicals and toxins here. 
So phytochemicals, these are one of the reasons we recommend eating lots of different colors of fruits and vegetables and plants. Phytochemicals are plant chemicals. That's what the name means. And what they do is they, well, there's something that plants produce in order for them to grow and thrive. But when we consume them in our body, they tend to have some perhaps disease reducing reducing effects, although we're still really researching their full effects. So there's hundreds of these. Um, you just honestly Google <laughs> list of phytochemicals and you're going to see a big long list of different types of structures found in plants that potentially have positive effects on the body. But the two main ones that I want to focus on are our flavonoids and our carotenoids. So when you think of flavonoids, think of like blueberries, think of like a uh, big bright blue or red or dark pigmentation so even raspberries would be um, have flavonoids in them as well and these are known to have anti-inflammatory anti-tumor and antioxidant effects carotenoids these are what we find as the name implies in carrots <laughs> but they're also found in other things that are orange or red or yellow and these as well have antioxidant effects so Honestly, don't worry about supplementing these. Just eat a lot of plants, a lot of fruits and vegetables, and you'll get tons of these in your diet. In addition to some positive effects that non-nutrients can have, some non-nutrients can potentially be toxic. So toxins are naturally found in plants and animals. They're often made by these plants and animals as part of their defense mechanism against various predators or any kind of thing that might harm them. Um, but when we take them into our body, they could potentially cause harm if we consume them above a particular threshold. Luckily, organizations like um, the Food and Drug Administration in the United States and Health Canada in, in Canada help to regulate the amount of toxins that can be found in food. And when below a certain threshold, they don't seem to cause harm in the body. If you are worried about the amount of toxins that you're getting in your food, a good rule of thumb is anything that's like stinky, smelly, old, moldy, get rid of it. Don't be eating any of that. Anything that has like a weird color to it as well that shouldn't be there. It's best to get, uh, throw that food out because really when those foods go off, as we might say, they're more likely to have these toxins. Also a little bit about detoxification, our kidneys and our liver and even our lungs are really good at getting rid of toxins. So as long as we're eating a wide variety of foods and not overdosing on anything in particular, we're probably going to be okay as far as the level of toxins in our body.